welcome to lecture number 2 of module 5 stability analysis of slopes in the course advanced geotechnical engineering. So, the title of this lecture is lecture 2 uh, which is the part of uh, module 5 stability of slopes. So, in the previous lecture we understood about uh, different types of uh, slope failures and causative factors for uh, slope failures and we also discussed about infinite slope stability analysis methods and we have also discussed that there are two types of uh, slopes predominantly they are infinite slopes and uh, finite slopes. Uh, then the finite slopes are the one which are uh, man made slopes uh, to the maximum extent and some hill slopes also can be called as a man made uh, as a, a finite slope. Now, when we look into the analysis of in uh, finite slopes there are different possible uh, failure surfaces. The failure surfaces can be planar in nature or if it is a homogeneous uh, uh, soil then there can be possibility that you, ha you can get a circular failure surface and if you are having a different stratification of soils there can be possibility that we can get non circular failure surfaces. So, in this slide. Uh, three different failure surfaces are shown one is uh, uh, defined as planar failure surface this occurs along a, a specific plane or weakness. So, where the potential uh, weak plane will exist and uh, this failure surface occurs along a specific plane or a weak, uh, weak uh, plane of weakness this basically excavations into stratified deposits where strata are dipping towards the excavation that is uh, the uh, layers of soil dipping towards the excavation and in earthen dams uh, along the sloping course of uh, weak material uh, not likely to occur in homogeneous soils. So, this planar failure surfaces uh, they occur along a specific plane of weakness and the circular failure surface. Uh, this is for soils exhibiting cohesion uh, C or cohesion and friction angle and no specific planes of weakness or uh, great strength. So, this actually takes uh, in the form of a, a circular failure surface and non circular failure surface when the distribution of shearing resistance within an earthen dam is non uniform and failure can occur along surfaces more complex than a circle. So, this is said that non circular uh, failure surface. Uh, mostly occurs in layered soils. So, uh, in the typical uh, a cross section of a finite, finite slope with one vertical n horizontal where the small n is the number uh, if n is equal to 2 it indicates that the slope is having one vertical two horizontal uh, uh, slope inclination that is about 26 degrees with horizontal and if uh, n is equal to 1 that indicates that uh, the slope is actually having a 45 degree slope inclination with the horizontal. And uh, the horizontal surface indicates that the back uh, slope which is uh, uh, 0 degrees, but uh, in practice there can be a possibility that the slopes can also have a uh, particularly especially for natural slopes, uh, nature so na slopes in nature there can be with uh, natural slope inclinations of uh, back slope inclinations ranging from 10 to 20 degrees or so. So, in this uh, uh, for a cross section of a finite slope a typical uh, planar failure surface is depicted here and then a two wedge type of uh, failure surface like uh, as it has been told in earthen dam suppose a sloping core and uh, the, if this happens to the weakness potential weakness plane then the two wedge failure mechanism can come. And this is the uh, typical uh, circular failure surface and this is uh, uh, also a circular failure surface where the majority of the failure surface extending into the a soft soil which is uh, underneath the uh, say for example, uh, beneath this uh, uh, level. And this is uh, uh, a toe slope failure where it can be seen that the entry and the exit point is from the, the toe of the slope. So, this is called the entry uh, point commencement of the entry point of the uh, failure surface and this is called the exit uh, failure surface. So, in a given uh, slope there can be number of uh, failure surfaces 
but uh, one need to determine the uh, failure surface which actually gives the critical factor of safety or the least factor of safety and that particular failure surface is called as the uh, potential failure surface. Now in this uh, particular slide there can be typical uh, rotational slides which are shown one is uh, a cylindrical uh, uh, shaped uh, failure surface you can see that this is a circular arc but the failure surface which actually shown is mostly this is common for uh, uh, plane strain structures there can be a settlement at the uh, certain point away from the crest of the slope and uh, a failure surface which actually occurs because with the soil movement which is actually shown here and this is uh, a typical rotational slide and which is called as a spoon shaped uh, uh, failure surface. So you can see that this uh, failure mode or a slide which is actually called as a, a spoon shaped slide. Now we actually yesterday we introduced ourselves to that there is a uh, effective or total stress parameters. We knew uh, we know that the total stress parameters may be can be adopted for the short term conditions and effective stress parameters can be adopted for the long term conditions or getting the long term stability of a slope. Total stress parameters can be obtained for the short term stability assessing the uh, short term stability of a slope. So the short term basically low permeable soil basically in clays at the end of the construction the soil is almost still undrained. So here the adoption of uh, adoption of uh, total stress analysis making use of undrained shear stress EU is adopted. So at the end of the construction of the, the soil uh, which is a clay is almost uh, uh, still undrained hence the total stress analysis making use of undrained shear strength CU is adopted. Uh, some free draining materials sands and gravels if you look into it. The drainage takes place immediately hence effective stress parameters C dash and uh, phi dash are used. Suppose if you have got a free draining materials sands and gravels when the drainage takes place immediately so the there is a need for adopting uh, effective stress parameters that is C dash and phi dash. Long term relatively after a long period of time let us say that uh, an embankment is constructed on a soft soil after having waited for uh, a certain uh, duration the fully drained condition uh, might have been attained. So the fully drained stage uh, uh, will have been reached hence the effective stress parameter C dash and phi dash uh, can be used. So uh, what we broadly say is that uh, the effective stress parameters are used for long term conditions are also used for um, you know the assessing the stability of a slope with feed draining materials like sands and gravels. In case if there is a short term condition with uh, low uh, permeability then the adoption of uh, uh, total stress parameters is more relevant. So the total stress strength is used for short term conditions in clay soils whereas the effective stress, effective stress strength is used for long term conditions in all kinds of soils or any, con any condition where the pore pressure is known. So this is after John Boo 1973. John Boo 1973 stated that the total stress strength is used for short term conditions in clay soils whereas the effective stress strength is used in long term conditions in all kinds of soils or any kinds any conditions where the pore water pressure is known. So this pore water pressure may result due to ingress of uh, rain water into the slope that we have discussed one of the causative factors of the slope instability is uh, rainfall. So uh, in the, because of this once the once the ingress of the rain water is uh, captured in the form of phreatic surfaces we can actually get the uh, uh, pore water pressure having known then we can actually estimate the total stress parameters and then the long term conditions can be used. The analysis of the finite slope uh, particularly with the factor of safety the factor of safety for finite slopes depends basically on the assumed location of the center of rotation of the slip surface. So uh, as uh, it was shown in the typical uh, failure surfaces particularly for circular arc uh, uh, failure surface wherein uh, it all depends upon the uh, location of center of rotation in uh, suppose if uh, 
a slope analysis which is done in uh, two dimensions that is basically for a plane strain structure in x and y direction. <coughs> then assumed location of the center of rotation for the slip surface and the radius of the fuel surface failure surface uh, basically at what radius it actually exists and type of failure that is toe failure, base failure or slope failure. <coughs> so, uh, before uh, attempting the analysis methods before attempting the analysis methods let us uh, look into the various definitions of factor of safety. Uh, here uh, the definitions are given with respect to limit equilibrium point of view, force equilibrium point of view and a moment equilibrium point of view. The topmost figure if you see uh, there is a failure surface which is indicated and uh, there is a shear strength which is actually shown and there is a shear stress which is actually shown. The shear stress is mobilized due to uh, the disturbing forces and the shear strength is mobilized to as a resisting force. So, as a limit equilibrium condition for total stress we can write factor of safety as uh, shear strength available divided by the shear stress. In case of effective stress which can be written as factor of safety is equal to C plus sigma dash tan phi dash by uh, the shear stress which is mobilized. As far as the force equilibrium is concerned for a typical uh, wedge failure which is uh, having a, a planar failure surface extending uh, a unit uh, length in perpendicular to the plane of this figure wherein we can actually write the force equilibrium as a factor of safety is equal to sum of resisting forces divided by sum of driving forces or disturbing forces. So, here if you look into it the uh, resisting forces are nothing but the resistance offered by the soil that is uh, nothing but the shear strength and uh, driving forces is nothing but the uh, because of the weight of the slice which is actually by acting vertically downwards and uh, by resolving this along the uh, potential plane of uh, failure that is the, the planar failure where which, which is actually taking place and that uh, component will work out to be W sin alpha. So, by writing uh, factor of safety is equal to uh, SU by uh, W sin alpha. So, we can write this as uh, uh, CL, uh, CL is nothing but cohesion which is uh, mobilized along the uh, it is assumed that the cohesion is mobilized uniformly and uh, over a length L, L is nothing but the length of the plane surface that is from, uh, from measured from this point to this point uh, into uh, plus N that is N is nothing but the normal force uh, uh, tan phi divided by W sin alpha where total uh, length of the sliding uh, plane which is actually shown here uh, which is uh, nothing but the this is the length of the sliding plane. Then similarly for moment, equi moment equilibrium the factor of safety is defined as resisting moment by driving moment. So, here uh, the uh, summation of resisting moments divided by summation of uh, driving moments. So, uh, when we try to uh, do the uh, get to get the resisting moment by taking the shear strength along uh, this particular uh, arc. Let us assume that we are having uh, SU1, SE2, SE3 and SE4. Then we can say that SU1 into DL1, SU2 into DL2, SE3 into DL3 plus SE4 into DL4 into R that is the this is the force uh, which is acting over this uh, particular length. We have taken each arc length as DL1 into one unit that is the unit perpendicular to the plane of this figure into R we will get the force into moment that is the resisting moment divided by W which is nothing but uh, the uh, entire mass is actually assumed as uh, the CG of this area is assumed to act here and the at the center of gravity here this W into this horizontal distance from the center of rotation that is X. So, that is actually called as W x. So, factor of safety is equal to uh, in the integration form if you show that R is equal to 0 to L S u into D L. So, this indicates that uh, uh, you know the factor of safety can be defined from the force equilibrium point of view or limit equilibrium point of view 
or moment equilibrium point of view. Now, let us uh, try to review the different uh, stability analysis methods. Uh, basically, all limit equilibrium methods utilize the Mohr Coulomb expression to determine the shear strength uh, tau f along the sliding surface. So, uh, prima facie, the uh, Mohr Coulomb uh, expression is used to determine the shear strength uh, tau f along the sliding surface, and uh, then uh, as we defined uh, in the uh, previous slide. The factor of safety is given by SU by F, uh, SU by tau, which is for total stress conditions, and for effective stress conditions, F is equal to uh, or FS is equal to C dash plus sigma dash uh, tan phi dash by tau. See, basically, the uh, the uh, the available shear strength tau F depends on the type of soil. So, if it is uh, say a particular type of soil and uh, the effective and the effective normal stress. Uh, whereas the mobilized shear stress tau depends upon the external forces acting on the soil mass that is the uh, the self weight of the soil uh, which are all called as geostatic conditions and as well as uh, any external loading if it is there on the crest of the slope that also add, adds to the uh, destabilizing uh, or de disturbing force. So, here uh, different uh, methods are summarized here. But we are going to discuss about uh, some uh, selected methods. Uh, we have uh, many methods uh, as you can see from this slide. Uh, the first method is ordinary method of uh, slices and uh, then it is followed by Bishop's simplified method is there. So, uh, in all these methods uh, the uh, zone or area within the failure surface uh, is assumed to be uh, divided into the number of uh, slices basically vertical slices and uh, then the slice equilibrium is considered considered um, either from the uh, for the force equilibrium point of view or moment equilibrium point of view and based on that uh, uh, the deductions for the factor of safety have been obtained. So, for example, in the case of ordinary uh, method of slices uh, the circular failure surface is assumed and uh, moment equilibrium uh, is uh, considered. And uh, in this method, uh, the both normal forces acting, interslice forces. That means that normal forces acting on the uh, perpendicular to the vertical face of the slide, as well as the tangential forces are neglected. In a, in the in, in the case of Bishop simplified method, uh, it is for circular failure surfaces, and uh, whereas uh, uh, moment uh, equilibrium is uh, uh, satisfied, but it considers uh, E that is the normal force uh, perpendicular to the uh, vertical slide vertical uh, surface of the slide but on both sides of the a, a slice but neglects the tangential forces the tangential forces are assumed to be zero in the case of john boos method uh, it is mainly predominantly for non circular uh, failure surfaces and uh, this also can be used for uh, uh, circular and non circular failure surfaces uh, but here this method is based predominantly on the force equilibrium. So, the moment equilibrium is not satisfied, the force equilibrium is satisfied. So, it considers uh, uh, the, uh, the normal forces uh, perpendicular to the inter, uh, slice forces, but it again like Bishop's method, it neglects the tangential forces that is uh, a one of the components of the interslice forces. Then uh, we have methods by Spencer method, wherein uh, it uh, considers uh, the T and E with some constant inclination where T is equal to a relationship between tangential force and uh, the normal force uh, E which was given as with a constant inclination T is equal to tan theta into E. And then Morgenstern price method wherein it can be used for bo uh, both circular and non circular failure surfaces and it satisfies both moment and uh, force equilibriums. And, uh, the assumption for T and E which is defined by a function x where T is equal to function x into a constant delta into E. So, uh, if you look into this the uh, Sarmas method and Morgenstern price method it uh, satisfies both uh, moment equilibrium and uh, force equilibrium methods, but uh, uh, the majority of uh, the applications the Bishop's simplified method is used or to some extent uh, the John Boos method is also used. 
So, this is the uh, typical uh, section of the unit width assumed for the analysis uh, as the slope is assumed to be like a, a plane strain uh, uh, structure. So, a unit width is considered for the analysis like a per meter uh, uh, width of the analysis is considered uh, for uh, uh, doing a, a two dimensional uh, stability analysis. Of course, now there are the methods which are actually available for performing the uh, three dimensional slope stability analysis. Now before uh, discussing about uh, the ordinary method of slices, let us look into the evolution of different types of methods for undrained conditions and uh, drained conditions and uh, then we will introduce uh, for uh, the ordinary method of slices and Bishop simplified method and uh, the other method like uh, Morgenstern uh, price method. In the case of uh, circular arc analysis for undrained condition or it is also called as pi u is equal pi suffix u that is uh, angle of internal friction undrained condition is equal to 0 analysis. Basically this is uh, uh, for a uh, analysis basically performed in terms of total stress analysis and applies to short term condition only for a cutting or embankment assuming the soil profile uh, to comprise of fully saturated clay. And uh, the on the right hand side a cross section of a slope or an embankment which is actually shown here and this is the, uh, the slope inclination which is, uh, which is uh, you know required to be uh, determined. Here what slope inclination is need to be provided so that uh, the adequate factor of safety uh, need to be ensured that is the point of uh, uh, you know the importance. Now here it is assumed that uh, the potential failure surface which is indicated with this yellow broken line can be seen here and this is the cohesion undrained cohesion is assumed to be mobilized uh, along the uh, failure arc and W is the CG of this. Uh, uh, you know the weight of the uh, entire area which is uh, subscri subscribed in this uh, zone A, B, C, D in this zone. So this uh, requires uh, determination of the uh, determination of uh, uh, you know area of this uh, portion and then by knowing the area into the 1 meter length perpendicular to plane of this figure we can calculate uh, by knowing also the unit weight of the soil. Uh, for used for embankment or uh, unit weight of soil in the cutting, we can determine what is uh, the weight and uh, uh, with respect to the moment of rotation which is considered, we can also determine what is the uh, you know the horizontal distance uh, from the center of rotation, horizontal uh, distance that is D is nothing but the uh, distance from the CG uh, of the area where the uh, weight W is acting to the uh, the center of uh, rotation. So, uh, for this, by taking uh, uh, moment equilibrium, where by taking moment about uh, the all the moment of all resisting forces about the center of rotation to moment of the all the driving uh, forces about the uh, center of rotation. So, here there is no uh, this W is because of the self weight of the soil. So, factor of safety is equal to MR by MD where MR is nothing but Cu into LA, LA is nothing but the length of uh, uh, length of the, uh, the entire arc into that R uh, Cu LA into R is nothing but the, uh, the resting moment divided by WD, WD is nothing but the, the driving moment or the disturbing moment. So here one of the disadvantages of this method is that accuracy, accuracy within, in which, with which actually you will determine uh, uh, the weight W or area and uh, the determination of D which is actually involved. So the calculation of factor of safety if you are having a, let us say an external load on the within the failure zone. If the external load which is uh, either due to distributed load or due to if there is a distributed load then one need to consider uh, the uh, you know the if this is identified as the potential failure surface then in this zone the load is distributed uh, over this length into the length which is perpendicular and at the CG of this that load is actually located. But in this case let us assume that there is a boundary wall which is located at a certain distance uh, where when we consider about this uh, intensity of the load uh, we can actually now take the disturbing moment is nothing but uh, W2 into D2. W1 that is due to the self weight of the soil into D1. Okay. So, resisting moment is nothing but still the Cu into L into R. 
So the factor of safety in this case uh, is uh, nothing but C U L R divided by uh, within brackets W1 D1 plus W2 D2. Now from the untrained uh, uh, analysis Taylor 1948 has developed a method wherein uh, the potential failure surface is given so that the least factor of safety can be determined. So this uh, development is uh, uh, sourced from the untrained analysis uh, which is which we have discussed just now uh, wherein uh, here it is actually considered that uh, uh, this entire uh, the soil portion below this uh, depth is uh, considered as a uh, D and then this height is say H and, uh, uh, and here uh, this is the slope inclination uh, which is beta and uh, beta is equal to 90 degrees means it is a vertical cut and this inclination is 2 theta and this inclination with uh, horizontal is alpha and uh, this is the cohesion which is actually mobilized and this is the weight and then this is the D from the uh, which is uh, horizontal distance measured from the CG of the weight from the weight of this entire portion uh, from the center of rotation. So D is nothing but the depth factor what we call which is uh, uh, the nomenclature used for developing uh, stability charts wherein uh, here uh, the factor of safety we know that we have just discussed uh, uh, in the previous slide where factor of safety is equal to CLR w by WD where factor of safety is the lowest factor of safety obtained from the circular arc analysis and uh, the factor of safety uh, or the self weight of the uh, uh, area or portion involved in the failure which is the active zone what it is called is a function of gamma H and geometry of the failure surface. The geometry of failure surface can be characterized by three angles alpha, beta and theta and uh, so uh, what it has been taken is that uh, the by rearranging the terms here C by factor of safety is written and which is written as CR is equal to gamma H into function of alpha, beta and theta. And CR is nothing but the required co uh, cohesion uh, of a soil just to maintain a stable slope. Uh, and, uh, and function of alpha, beta and theta is a pure number and basically that is actually designated as a stability number. So the Taylor stability number is actually given by CR is equal to C uh, stability number is equal to CR by gamma H. Uh, so CR is nothing but uh, required cohesion to just maintain a, a stable slope otherwise it can also be written as uh, C by uh, gamma H by Fs into CR when you substitute for C by Fs we can write by C by Fs into gamma H. So for a, for a factor of safety is equal to 1 it actually induces that Ns is equal to C by gamma H. So the required cohesion uh, CR is nothing but the required cohesion to just maintain a stable slope. So here uh, the particularly the uh, when, uh, with reference to the angles alpha, beta, theta uh, what has been done is that the weight portion which is actually considered there that is the weight which is subscribed as the function of gamma H and geometry of failure surface are considered in the form here uh, the, in the form uh, as a to represent the geometry of the failure surface. So based on that uh, deliberations the Taylor actually has given uh, uh, stability charts. Uh, which are known as popularly known as Taylor's curves wherein on the x axis we have slope inclination it ranges from uh, uh, 0 degrees uh, to 90 degrees and uh, on the y axis it is the stability number that is Ns is equal to C by gamma H. So uh, here it can be seen that 1 up to beta is equal to less than 53 degrees uh, it is actually depend upon the, the D which is nothing but this failure surface is assumed to uh, pass through below the base. But uh, when we when the beta greater than uh, 53 it is found to independent of uh, D. So it is only uh, depend upon the, the slope inclination which is uh, when, if, when it is more than 53 degrees. So uh, it can be seen there for more than this it, uh, it is uh, uh, the constant the stability number will be constant. So 
So, here this is used for uh, phi u uh, is equal to 0 and mostly for undrained conditions this is used. Now the undrained analysis of the by using this Taylor's method basically for uh, beta less than 53 degrees as we discussed uh, in the previous slide the stability number is a function of beta and d by h. So that means that here there can be a possibility of the base failure for gentle slopes the critical failure surface goes below the toe and always restricted above the, the strong layer hence this, this depends upon the uh, its location. Uh, for beta greater than 53 degrees when the slope inclination is greater than 53 degrees the stability number is only function of uh, slope inclination that is beta all critical slip surfaces are passed through the toe. So this is basically because the uh, for such steep slopes the critical failure surface passes to the toe of the slope and does not go below the toe. Uh, let us assume that say for vertical cut beta is equal to 90 degrees ns is equal to 0.26 uh, from, from the short term conditions. So it can be seen here for beta is equal to 90 degrees the ns value is uh, about 0.26. So when we calculate back uh, when by substituting uh, uh, the, uh, this particular expression wherein the critical height uh, which nothing but where the factor of safety is equal to 1 the critical height is uh, defined as a height at which the fact, uh, factor of safety uh, is tending to 1. Uh, by doing this we can actually get hc as uh, uh, 3.85 c by gamma uh, the, this is actually obtained from the Taylor stability number whereas uh, one, perf one performs the conventional uh, uh, analysis by using uh, at pressure theory it is uh, can be obtained as hc is equal to 4 c by gamma which is nothing but by considering the earth pressure equation like uh, sigma a is equal to uh, k a gamma h minus uh, 2c root k a and uh, wherein uh, if you consider both uh, negative pressures uh, that is the depth of the tension crack uh, that is where the negative pressure is existing and, uh, and uh, equivalent portion below the uh, this particular zone and when you take the equilibrium of that we can actually get uh, the 4 c by gamma that is nothing but the uh, critical height or the critical height of a vertical cut which is actually called and this is the height at which uh, by attaining this height the soil is supposed to fail. So undrained uh, analysis uh, stability charts given by Taylor method the position of the critical surface may be limited by two factors one is the depth of the stratum in which the sliding can occur and the possible distance from the toe of the rupture surface of the toe of the slope. So the possible distance from the toe of the failure surface from the toe of the slope that is nothing but from the Taylor actually has given charts for determining this particular value n, n h in terms of n h it has been given like uh, this is uh, uh, you know the distance uh, in terms of n multiplied by h, h is nothing but the slope height and this is uh, the failure surface which is obtained for slopes which are actually less than 53 degrees also. So the stability numbers for homogeneous slopes for phi is equal to 0 say for example by knowing d by h that is the depth factor and, and beta the ns and n can be obtained from this chart. So here n is nothing but by knowing this we can see that where it actually cuts and that is the n and then uh, by taking this uh, horizontal projection out onto the stability number we can get the, the stability uh, number ns. So for uh, d by h is equal to 1 that is uh, d by h is equal to uh, 1 beta greater than 53 degrees the n is equal to 0 that means that the slope actually the failure surface passes through the toe of the slope. So and some more important points uh, as far as the Taylor's method is concerned they are actually summarized in this uh, slide. It is necessary to ignore the possibility of the tension cracks otherwise geometrically similar failure surface do not occur on slopes having different heights. So uh, the possibility of the tension cracks is ignored here and Taylor stability numbers were determined from the analysis of total stress conditions only that is basically for undrained or short term conditions only. And total uh, Taylor's method is practically restricted to problems involving undrained saturated clays or to much common cases where the pore, pore pressures uh, is everywhere 0 that means that the pore water pressures are everywhere 0. 
in case if you are actually getting a, a tension crack uh, let us assume that the tension crack uh, which is uh, can be de de determined uh, let us say from the by using the earth pressure fundamentals where sigma a is equal to k a gamma h minus uh, k a gamma z minus uh, 2 c uh, root k a uh, when for a clay soil when phi is equal to 0 we can say that uh, c is equal to c u and k is equal to 1 and at point where uh, the pressure tends to become 0 we can say that z naught is equal to 2 c by 2 c u by gamma that is nothing but the depth of the tension crack. Now when we consider the tension crack and let us assume that if the tension crack is filled with water and it can actually cause a destabilizing uh, force and uh, that portion within this uh, tension crack zone that is the circular arc which is actually uh, passing beyond this point is not considered in the analysis. That means that uh, in the factor of safety determined by this particular method is nothing but C u into L A C from here to here that is the length of this arc into the radius divided by W into D in plus half gamma W z naught square that is this uh, this force into the lever arm that is say L. The L is nothing but from this distance to the vertical distance from this uh, from the uh, from uh, horizontal vertical distance uh, L is nothing but the vertical distance measured from the center of rotation to the, the location of the horizontal uh, force PW. So this in the in uh, like this when we have the tension crack this has need to be accounted. Now let us look into the ordinary method of slices in this method the potential failure surface is assumed to be circular arc with uh, center O and radius R. Uh, the soil mass basically the soil mass ABCD above a trail surface AC is divided uh, by vertical uh, planes into a series of slices. Uh, as we have discussed that one of the limitations of uh, the undrained uh, uh, slope stability analysis with uh, phi is equal to 0 analysis is that uh, determination of uh, uh, area and then you know determination of the weight and then D. So here what has been done is that the portion within the uh, you know sub, uh, soil mass ABC which is undergoing failure surface is divided into number of slices. The number of slices depends upon the by convenience it is actually divided and uh, the slices uh, are divided such a way that they have some uniform horizontal distance not necessarily uniform uh, but mostly the uniform horizontal distance and the base of each slice is assumed to be straight line and uh, so the circular arc is assumed to be as a straight line and factor of safety is defined as the ratio of the available shear strength to the shear strength uh, tau m which is uh, which must be mobilized to maintain the condition of limiting equilibrium. So uh, here what actually we can say is that the ordinary method of uh, slices satisfies both uh, the moment equilibrium for circular surface but neglects the interslice uh, normal that is here uh, the normal forces on these slices and tangential forces. So this is a typical slice uh, so the free body diagram of a slice in case of ordinary method of slices where there is a vertical uh, force which is shown that is this is the W is the weight of that a particular slice if there are n number of slices and if this is the ith number of slice then the weight of ith slice is W i and uh, this is the resisting force that is S and this is the normal force that is n dash. So it satisfies moment equilibrium condition and neglects interslice normal and shear forces normal and shear forces shear forces in this direction one acting downwards one acting upwards and gives the most, most conservative factor of safety. So this gives the most conservative factor of safety basically useful for uh, demonstration. So ordinary method of slices uh, the moment equilibrium for uh, slip surface but neglects both interslice and normal shear forces. The advantage of this method if you look into it, it is simple uh, in solving the factor of safety since the equation does not require any iteration uh, process. So this is uh, described in the form of uh, a figure which is actually shown here where this is a typical slope and this is A, B, C uh, this is the failure surface which is uh, uh, assumed to be a one of the potential failure surfaces. There can be innumerable number of failure surfaces and but A, B, C, D in this particular case is assumed as a A, B, C is assumed as a failure surface and D is the point of the crest and O is the center of rotation 
and r is the radius of uh, rotation and if you divide the slices uh, of certain horizontal uh, length let us say is b and uh, if you consider the free body diagram of this particular this thing and it actually has uh, the normal forces e1 and e2 both are different and x1 and x2 the uh, the shear forces when uh, when we consider when you do not consider these forces then e1 minus e2 is equal to 0 x1 minus x2 is equal to 0 and uh, then here uh, this the e1 is equal to 0 and e2 is equal to 0 x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 0 and uh, this is the uh, you know from the when the vertical this is the weight is actually assumed to be uh, weight of each slice is assumed to act at the center of this uh, uh, slice of width b horizontal distance and the arc is assumed to be as a straight line here and this is the tangential force and n dash is uh, acting on the base of the slice and ul is actually acting on pore product pressure acting on the base of the slice. So, n uh, this is n dash ul which actually gives this normal force and this angle which is subtended from the this n dash directly extends to the center of rotation that means you can see here and this angle is called as the alpha. So, as we traverse from this side to this side the angle alpha changes that can be noted from here. So, the method of slices from the limit equilibrium condition point of view it can be given as tau m tau factor of safety as tau f by tau m the factor of safety is taken to be the same for each slice implying that there must be mutual support between the slides and force must act between the slices and the total weight of the slice w is equal to gamma b h. So, if you consider the slice of width b and the height is actually measured at the center that is this height which is actually regarded as the height of the slice this is the height of the slice at the center where weight is actually acting and then the weight is equal to gamma into b into h and if so let us assume that in determination of this we are having in a given slice there are three layers of soils then we have to take gamma 1 h 1 gamma 2 h 2 gamma 2 gamma 3 h 3 into b the v is nothing but the width of the slice. The total normal force n is equal to sigma into l sigma is the normal stress acting over the length l into perpendicular to plane of that figure what we consider is 1 meter. So, it is the force is nothing but sigma into l into 1. So, this includes n dash is equal to sigma dash l and u is equal to u l and u is the pore water pressure at the center of the base and l is the length of the base and the shear force on the base is nothing but t is equal to tau m into l the tau m into l the l is the length along the the failure surface in a given slice of having width b the total normal forces on slides e1 and e2 and the shear forces on the slides x1 and x2. So, the method of slices considering the moment about O the sum of the moments of the shear force T on the failure arc AC must be equivalent to the moment of the weight of the soil mass ABCD. So, this we can write as sigma T into R is equal to sigma W R sin alpha. So, by writing by using T is equal to tau m into L is equal to tau m is equal to tau f by factor of safety into L and we can write sigma T r as sigma tau f by factor of safety into L is equal to sigma w sin alpha. So, factor of safety is given by by rearranging these terms we can write factor of safety is equal to tau f into L divided by which is sigma that is nothing but the resisting, resisting portion divided by the, the driving that is disturbing one w sin alpha. So, factor of safety is nothing but sigma tau f into L divided by sigma w sin alpha this is from the limit equilibrium condition. From for an analysis in terms of effective stress we can write factor of safety is equal to sigma c plus sigma dash tan phi into L. So, by writing sigma dash into L as n dash we can write c dash into L a plus tan phi dash into sigma n dash divided by w sin alpha. So, equation 1 is exact, but approximations are introduced in determining the forces n dash. So, in factor of safety is equal to c dash into L a plus tan phi dash. In case if you are having a cohesionless soil slope, 
then we get the factor of safety is nothing but when c dash is equal to 0 the first term will get cancelled and where we have tan phi dash into sigma dash n dash by w sin alpha. So, so this can be used for both undrained this short term stability as well as for the long term stability by substituting the, the relevant characteristic, characteristic strength parameters. The Fellinius or Swedish solution is actually given. It is assumed that for each slice the resultant of the interslice forces is 0 and the solution involves resolving the forces on each slice normal to the base where we here we give n dash is equal to w cos alpha minus u alpha and this is actually given by rewriting the equation 1 which is shown in the previous slide as this particular one c dash l a plus tan phi dash into sigma dash n dash where n which is actually rewritten this is this equation in terms of so this is nothing but c dash l a plus tan phi dash into sigma w cos alpha minus u l divided by w sin alpha sigma. So this expression is actually or this with this modification this is called as the Fellinius or Swedish method of slices both are ordinary method of slices and Fellinius method of slices one and the same but this is the uh, the minor difference which is actually there c dash into l a plus tan phi dash into sigma of w cos alpha minus u l divided by w sin alpha which is a summation. So the how we can actually do the analysis by using the Fellinius method of slices means in a given portion we need to assume the potential value surface and then divide the slices of the horizontal having horizontal width and then number the slices like the numbering is done from one order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and with a given center of rotation and for a given potential surface this is the entry point and this is the exit point and wherein from the each center of the slice is actually identified and the angles alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, alpha 5, alpha 7 are determined. So for an analysis in terms of total stress the parameters C, C u and phi u can be used and the expression will be like this and for phi u is equal to 0 analysis which is nothing but factor safety nothing but C u L a divided by w sin alpha. So this particular Swedish method of slices was extended by Bishop in this solution basically assumed that the resultant forces on the slides of slices are horizontal where x1 minus x2 is equal to 0 is considered. So the resultant forces on the sides of the slices are horizontal and assumed that this x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. By with this assumption the equilibrium of the shear force on the base of any slice is given as t is equal to 1 by factor of safety into c dash into l plus n dash tan phi dash. So resolving the forces in vertical direction we can get w is equal to n dash cos alpha plus u l cos alpha plus c dash into l sin alpha by factor of safety plus n dash tan phi dash sin alpha by factor of safety after some rearrangement and using l is equal to b secant, b secant alpha because that inclination is alpha and the horizontal distance is b. L is the length along the along the uh, wedge along the, uh, uh, the straight line uh, length along the uh, slice. So by simplifying we get the factor of safety expression as 1 by sigma of w sin alpha in a summation c dash b plus w minus u b within brackets tan phi dash uh, into secant alpha divided by 1 plus tan alpha tan phi dash by factor of safety. So this uh, expression wherein uh, you can notice that the factor of safety is uh, uh, existent in the both uh, both the methods. So the generally how it is done is that this is done by iteration methods and uh, the factor of safety uh, which is obtained by uh, performing some couple of iterations will yield to a factor of safety. So for this here what it is done is that the factor of safety is determined first primarily by Swedish method of slices and that is used as the initial value and then the number of iterations are specified or performed based on the, the logic which is actually set in the software which is actually used for determining this or manually with a couple of iterations it can be determined by using this expression. In Bishop 1955 in his simplified method of slices he showed that how non-zero values of the resultant x1, x1 minus x2 could be introduced into analysis but refinement is only a marginal effect on the factor of safety. 
So the pore water pressure also can be uh, related to total fill pressure where it, uh, where it is given as the pore water pressure coefficient which is nothing but u by gamma h, u is nothing but the pore water pressure at any point divided by gamma h, the h is the let us say the height of the slice. So it is, it is uh, pore water pressure is defined in terms of a uh, total fill pressure at any point by means of uh, dimensionless uh, pore water pressure ratio which is uh, called as ru. When R u is equal to 0 0.5, it is said that the slope is completely saturated, and for any slice, R u is equal to uh, u by w by b. By rewriting this uh, uh, this one uh, in the previous equation, what we have uh, given, we can write or express factor safety as 1 by uh, sigma w sin alpha uh, into sigma uh, c dash b plus w into 1 minus uh, uh, R u tan phi dash into secant alpha. 1 plus tan alpha into tan phi by factor of safety. So in the Bishop simplified method as is actually shown here uh, it satisfies the equilibrium of the factor of safety and satisfies the vertical force equilibrium for uh, vertical force equilibrium for n and moment equilibrium for factor of safety by determining factor of safety uh, the moment equilibrium is factor uh, satisfied and vertical force equilibrium is satisfied with respect to n and uh, considers, considers the interslice forces E1 and E2 and more common in practice applied mostly for circular failure surfaces. The salient features are actually given here and this is the typical free body diagram of a slice in case of Bishop simplified method where the weight of the slice and the shear strength which is actually mobilized along the failure surface and dash is the normal force acting on the failure surface normal to the failure surface and E1 and E2 are the interslice forces on a particular slice force. So the Bishop simplified method consider the inter in uh, interslice normal fo uh, forces but neglects the interslice shear forces it satisfy it further satisfies the vertical force equilibrium to determine the effective base normal force n dash and uh, further uh, we also said that the john boos simplified method in john boos simplified method is basically based on a complete slip surface and the factor of safety is determined by the horizontal force equilibrium uh, basically here uh, both horizontal and vertical force equilibriums are satisfied and it does not satisfy the moment equilibrium. John Booth simplified method does not satisfy the moment equilibrium, uh, moment equilibrium and considers, considers the interslice forces E1 and E2 like Bishop only and uh, it is commonly used for composite shear surfaces. So basically for layered soils or stratified soils or when you are having a non-homogeneous soils this John Booth method is advocated for its use and basically it is used for composite slip surfaces or non-circular slip surfaces and the factor safety is determined by horizontal force equilibrium only and moment equilibrium is not satisfied and in this slide the free body diagram of a slice which is actually considered in the John Booth simplified method is shown wherein which is actually very similar to simplified method wherein uh, only the difference is that it does not satisfy moment equilibrium only the force equilibriums that is vertical and horizontal are satisfied. So in this uh, lecture uh, we try to introduce ourselves to different uh, failure surfaces and uh, we will also lo look into uh, different types of methods which are actually used for analysis we have seen the phi is equal to u0 method and Taylor's uh, stability chart method which is the deduction of uh, from the uh, extension of uh, uh, unrained slope analysis method and from there we also discussed about the ordinary method of slices and felonious method of slices and then Bishop simplified method which is mostly used for common uh, commonly used for uh, circular failure surfaces and for composite uh, slip surfaces or non-circular uh, slip surfaces in a stratified soils the John Booth simplified method is also introduced. So in the next lecture what we do is that we will try to look into some examples wherein we can actually uh, see how the problems can be solved by using uh, typical calculations uh, uh, with the manual calculations as well as the uh, in this particularly we will actually try to see some demonstrate some problems by using uh, uh, some relevant packages uh, for academic purposes.